Hey, Edith. What, Christy? You know, we all have to do our part for the environment. Uh Uh-huh. And there are many different ways that one can save energy. Yeah, how? Normally, I use the couch. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips. A fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hello, gardeners, and hello, Edith. Hello, everybody out there who is or isn't gardening. Hello, Christy. How are you? So, first I want to say, Edith, thank yes. you so much for these beautiful beets you gave me from your garden. Oh, you're welcome. Be- they say that's a superfood, you know. Well, I love beets. I love to roast them, and I have to put them on salad with a little bit of goat cheese. And for some reason, folks, I didn't plant beets this year. I don't know why. It just didn't, I just, as I was planting stuff, I ran out of space. But I'm going to plant some in a couple weeks for fall planting. Yeah, good for you. Because you know, Christy, don't ever beat yourself up. You know, you can't think of everything. You can't do everything. There's not room enough for everything. So it's fine. And I have a nice neighbor like you who gives me beets. I will give you beets. And I have something for you. What is it? It's yellow. (laughs) I have a yellow squash because, as you know, I have three accidental yellow squash plants Uh uh-huh and i'm harvesting them though when they're a really good size not waiting till they get too big yeah this one is only maybe about six or eight inches long and they're really good sauteed in butter they look well that looks beautiful that's beautiful that's for you i have something else for you is it money no (laughs) what is it though i think you might like it more than money okay let's see would you like oh, some tomatoes? More than money. Eat more than money. Yes, I, I some tomatoes. Oh my God, I sure would. Thank you so much. I'm getting so many tomatoes. And you know, this says something, Edith, about how much I like you, because normally I don't give tomatoes away. I know you don't. You said that last year. Can I? Can you believe I'm using the term last year and we're referring to our podcast, but you said that. So I feel very special. So this is a bunch of cherry tomatoes, because right now my cherry tomato plant is about seven feet tall and they're just i'm getting like 50 or so i think every other day i so oh my god and then some of the some of the fourth of july tomatoes in there too thank you christy i would have brought you a zucchini but i don't have one ready my my plant is on pause it's literally (laughs) on pause you try to gotta push the button i gotta find the (laughs) button it's got like a g-spot or something i guess hey can we thank somebody from our garden party oh we should Let's give a shout out to Lindsay from Denver for becoming a member of our garden party. That means she throws us a couple bucks a month to help support the podcast so we can keep giving you folks some good gardening advice, some really bad jokes, and some laughs. Oh, thank you so much, Lindsay, who is an exemplary human being. And folks, if you want to join the garden party, just go down into the show notes and there's a link there that you can click on, and it'll only just take a couple minutes to join. Please scroll all the way down. You have no idea how hard Christy and I work on those show notes and the e-blast <laughs> and all that. We work really hard, don't we? We do, Edith. <laughs> like to be appreciated once in a while. Yeah, well, I appreciate you, Edith. I appreciate you, too. Thank you. And thanks, Lindsay. Edith, how's your garden going? Oh, Christy, it's a whole different story from last week. You know what? Last week, I had a, I don't know if you get this, I had a, I hate my garden week, which very often happens when a week that's really hot, Mm. no rain, tomatoes are not in, and all I do is look around and see weeds and Japanese beetles. Oh. So last week, I It's like a war. It is. And that, I think, actually inspired me to write the Ask Agnes that's coming up later, because I was having such a... Remember I said to you, oh, nothing's going on in my garden and I wouldn't talk about it like I was pouting? Yeah. I had a, I hate oh, my garden week. Oh. I love my garden again. Oh, good. <laughs> I've gotten um, one tomato, but that's enough. Like you said, 
one tomato and it makes a lot worthwhile. And the first tomato and is it was the best the first tomato. One. So so delicious. I hope you just ate it right out there in the garden. That's I, what I usually do. I did. It was so great. So I have been busy. I um that one tomato plant that I told you was behind my peach tree that had not one single tomato. I took it out. Killed me, but I took it out. You know, as tough as that is, Edith, you did the right thing. I did, didn't Just I? like I had to do that with my tomato, my Roma plant that I called Cindy Brady. Yeah. Can't you don't want it. you don't want the fungus to spread if there is a fungus. Right. You stop producing, you just it's just best to It was just taking up space and shading other things. Um I fertilized with poop tea. I harvested kale. For the first time, I harvested almost all of it before it got those white fly eggs. You know how that happens every yes. single year? Well, it didn't have any, and I was really proud of myself. And it doesn't wreck. You can still eat the kale and wash it off, but yes. it doesn't look as nice. It's just something You're not going to serve it to company. Yeah. So now you have company kale. I have company kale in my freezer. Uh, I did that. Um... Oh my gosh, I have to thank one of our listeners. I hope she's still a listener. She wrote us a letter last year. Named Her name is Lula. And she said how much she liked Swiss chard. Yes, and remember we, that was the letter because we were kind of poo-pooing Swiss chard. Yes. Saying that we've grown it, we we weren't growing it anymore because yes. there, what do we do with it? And it was like a waste of the garden space. I love it so much. It gets gigantic. I'm harvesting it, and I'm eating it in salads. That's what Lulu said. She told us to give it another try, and you did eat it. That's I good. Did. I did not. So thank <laughs> you. I can bring you some if you need some. Well, that's great. So thank you, Lula. Thank you, listeners. When you write in, we really listen, and sometimes we actually take advice, right? Yeah. Bad news, bad garden news. My Japanese beetles have moved onto my plum tree, <gasps> and... My plum tree is not doing good. Well, I, your plum tree is just having the year. It's having the worst year. Some of the leaves are yellow and falling off. So I called the nursery where I bought it, and the man said, maybe it's an iron deficiency in the soil. So I went, and I bought some iron collate or something that it's called. I should probably have written that down, and I applied it today. So I okay. will let you know if that helps. I'm still not going to get any plums, but I'd like to save the tree. The tree yeah. doesn't look so good. And a couple of weeks ago, Edith, you talked about how some of your plums were getting were, were there, but they were small and shrively. Um, all of them are like that. All of They're, them are like that. Yeah. I, <gasps> there's like 10 in the tree now. There's more Japanese beetles in the tree yeah, than there are it, plums. You're right. We're yeah. beyond the plums now. This is about your tree. This is about And that tree. might be why the Japanese beetles are attracted to it, because sometimes bugs will... Take advantage of something like that. Oh, Christy, that's a really good point. And they're opportunistic. And yes, and when they go to the top of the tree, I can't kill them. They're too high up. Wow. It's not like they're smart enough to know that, but it seems like they kind of are. Mm-hmm. So, so that's not good news. I got out my hose and I put it on jet and I sprayed good. the tree. Yeah, that's And I could see happen. them spewing all over the garden, you know. Hopefully I maim them. I don't know. I well, hate you know, be... a hard spray of water is a really good environmental way of dealing with it. It is. And it's because my hose, get my hose was un, unrolled, it was super hot water coming out. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> you know, it's really interesting at how sadistic the whole Japanese beetle oh thing my is, isn't it? Yes. I'm not usually this sadistic, folks, but those things, well, they eat everything. I have, I have a little picture edith of soapy water uh -huh. that i walk around because i right now i just on my virginia creeper and i'll just punch them off in there uh -huh. and they usually hang out in little groups i've noticed so there'll be like three or four of them in a little yes, orgy they do they're having a little orgy party on one leaf <laughs> so then i put them in there and then you think well i could i would dump out the water to start out fresh but i leave those dead beetles in there i do too as a sign i do as too. a warning mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i can count my victories <laughs> You know, 30 today, 40 today. So anyway, it was a, it was a good week. I'm, ho I'm hopeful for my uh, plum tree and um, my peaches are still doing really well. Everything else is really good. How is your garden? Well, I'm in the middle of a big experiment. Uh-oh. Edith, what is I it? I think you'll appreciate this. 
with all your German heritage? You're doing sauerkraut. Yes. Yes. Good I'm not much. sure if I'm doing it right. So afterwards, I'll have to have you come look at it. I started it on Sunday. Uh-huh. And folks, this I never knew this before. I never knew the ingredients of sauerkraut. Just salt. Just salt. That's it. That's no it. vinegar. It's just salt. Well, I had last week I said I had six cabbage heads. And there's only so much coleslaw a human being can eat in yes. a week. So I took four of them. I shredded them up so I had five pounds. Uh-huh. And then with that amount of cabbage, it's three tablespoons of salt. They recommend you use kosher or pickling. So I had pickling salt. So I did that. I squished it all up. And a friend gave me one of those crocs. And so did you massage the, the kraut really good? I massaged really it all good? in, but mm-hmm. I don't know if I massaged it enough. I think I need to add more, uh, like a water brine to it so uh-huh. it stays under the water because uh-huh. it's a... What's it called? It's called an 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 anaerobic. Anaerobic. Did you weigh it down? With yes, something? I weighted it down. Mm-hmm. I actually put cabbage, big cabbage leaves on top. That's what I do. And mm-hmm. then I weighted it down, and I'll have you take a look at it. And can I ask you this right now? Yeah. I, maybe you can't tell, but try to smell the air in here. Uh, can you smell it at all? No. Well, you know, I was a smoker for a long time, so. Okay. Yeah. Because so if I ever smell, remember I can't smell very good. I can't smell myself either, so let me know. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you want me to go over there right now and put no, my no, nose no, in No, 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 I'm good. Let's continue. Okay. Let's not go on a into the weeds, as our engineer would say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you've got it in a crock. You've got it weighted down. Yes. So it sounds good. You want me to look at it? Yeah, I'll have you look at it because I want to make sure. I think I might need to add a bit uh, like a water brine to it because it's not really submerged under the... Under its own juices. Okay. And yeah, it has to be, Christy. It has to be. So I'll have you take a look at it. I did some research to say, how do you know if your sauerkraut's gone bad? And they'll say, it's a difference between a, a smell where you go, oh, that smells sweet. Uh-huh. And, and you go, that smells like sauerkraut. Uh-huh. Or a smell that you go, that smells bad. Yeah. And yeah. of course, some people think that sauerkraut just like, that smells bad. So I'm not quite sure. So maybe you'll come take a I will look, look at it. I will take a look at it. When did you start it? Sunday. And today's Thursday? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I, w- I will take a look at it because um, because you asked me to and because I'm interested. <laughs> I'm invested now in your sauerkraut. Well, I named it. Of course you did. Does it start with an S? No. What is it? Gunther. <laughs> <laughs> Gunther. Uh, so that's that. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that uh, we have, you know, Edith and I, we live, folks, about three blocks away from each other. And on my block, there's been some new people who moved, moved in last year. Make them slowly. leave. Make them leave. I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Looking at you like, what are you talking about, Edith? <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead. They're a lovely family. Uh-huh. And I was visiting them, and she yes. says, do you want to come into the backyard and see the garden? And, of course, they have a lovely, beautiful raised flower, raised garden with tomatoes and vegetables, and it looks really great. But I just glanced at it just for a little bit because to my left, I my eye caught this plant, and I was just drawn to it Uh-oh. next to their garage. Was it a gigantic Venus flytrap? Did it try to get you? What was it? It was a giant row of hydrangeas. Oh, no. Eat it. Because I know you wanted that so badly. Friends, that's one of my all-time favorite gardening mistakes is how many times I've tried to grow hydrangeas in the Denver metro area, which is the High Plains Desert, Uh and, you know, buying the plants and then having them die. Chrissy, that was episode number one. It was. And... I tell you, they, these hydrangeas, Edith, were dinner plate size. They wow. were huge. And there are about six of them all along. And he's got them on a drip system, which I go, well, that's probably what I should do. Ah. And he's also a landscape architect, so maybe he knows oh, so he's, some things. Yes, he's so a, yeah. he didn't know why his uh, tomato blossoms were falling off. So. so did you tell him? Yeah, yeah. Then did you ask him for help with the hydrangeas? I just admire them. They they were just stunningly beautiful. Boy, oh, was I beautiful. jealous of those hydrangeas. Oh, they were just gorgeous. Hmm. And then on the zucchini update, my little baby zucchini plant that I'm calling Cindy Brady 2 mm-hmm. 
that uh-huh. I put in the place of where my Roma plant was is doing pretty good. I think maybe it's like four, four to five inches high right now. Yeah. That's good. That's How about you? Good. Is that the same as your little baby yellow squash? My little baby yellow squash is about four inches as a, as a diameter, as its diameter. Let's put pictures of these little folks on our Facebook page, Edith. Yeah. Because it'll be interesting to see. I think, you know, folks, what we're going to try to track is can't it, because we planted these in late July. Mm -hmm. Because we killed something. We killed (laughs) a perfectly good big yellow squash. It's so dead. Have you posted that? Well, here's my question about this. Okay. The first thing is, will your little baby yellow squash Mm -hmm. and my little baby zucchini, will it ever bear fruit before we get our first Mm -hmm. frost? This is our experiment. That's going to be interesting to find out. Yes. The other thing I want to talk about is that the big, large yellow squash yes. that I dug up and ran a couple blocks down, and we put it in the hole, and we watered it, and then you said it had died, 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 died. Mm-hmm. And then you showed me a picture of it. Mm-hmm. And yet, there's still some green there. So <laughs> I got to say, is it really, Edith? I have to go over there. You have to go over there. But I haven't been uh, to your house in a couple weeks. So okay. is it really, 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 Dad? Yes, it really is. Are you sure? Are you still yes. watering it? You're not watering anymore? No. It's not. Well, you know, it rained two days ago, right, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I, you know what? You might find it interesting to see if you still water. I will. Okay, I will. I will, I will, I will, I promise. Lots of experiments happening. Experiments are good. Okay, folks. If you hear any words or terms that you're not familiar with or you want a good laugh, you should check out the Upside Down Dictionary. It's on our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Or click on the link for our show notes. Um, While you're there, sign up for our newsletter and check out our blog posts. And if you want to see pictures of our gardens, inspirations, gardening jokes, bad jokes, (laughs) visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Don't forget, you've probably forgotten we have a YouTube channel. Nobody ever goes there. Why don't you be the first? (laughs) (laughs) And then coming up next, we have one of our handcrafted little pot plays that we do. And Lindsay, who is our garden party member check out because we use your name in it and it's inspired by my own bad tomato stuff you're listening to ask agnes i'm agnes and i'm here to take the agony out of gardening we have a caller Lindsay. hi how can i help you agnes I'm on my last nerve with my tomatoes. Oh, no. What's going on, Lindsay? I've been growing heirloom tomatoes for five years. Every year, same thing. First, they're fine. Then the leaves turn brown and dry. Ah, the withering tomato plant. As withering as a look from the Queen of England if someone toots during a royal dinner. Or the look Bill Belichick gave to the reporter who asked if his team had cheated. Withering is not to be confused with wuthering, as some of my students do at the local community college where I teach English Lit. It's not withering heights. Oh, how funny that would be. Up there on the moors, the landscape withers. (laughs) Isn't that funny? (laughs) I don't get it. You see, it's wuthering heights, not withering heights. Wuthering comes from the Old Norse and means roaring like the wind on a stormy day. I hate English lit. What about my tomatoes? Yes, the tomatoes. It sounds like a late blight. Have you rotated the location of your tomatoes year to year? No. Do you avoid overhead watering? No. Have you tried growing a hybrid tomato, some of which are specifically bred to resist fungus and viruses? No. I am determined to grow the best heirloom tomatoes. I will not be defeated by my garden. Dear Lindsay, A garden is not a competition where one crushes the other teams in order to win the gold. Remember, Mother Nature will always win. In the meantime, I suggest rotating the location, watering the toes, not the nose, and trying hybrids for a while. I hate my garden. Might I suggest listening to Upside Down Tulips. It's gardening advice and humor all in the same podcast. They even have a couple of episodes on growing tomatoes, which you can listen to whither thou goest. Huh? <laughs> whither, not whither. I get it. <laughs> oh. oh, we got disconnected. Poor thing. 
I wish her the best of luck. Wait a minute. I have a wonderful idea. Stay tuned, everybody. I'll be back in a flash. So here we are, Edith. Yes. It's August. Mm -hmm. It's hot. I love my garden again. Mm -hmm. You love your garden again? I do indeed. And this week, folks, we're talking about water-wise techniques, how to conserve water for your garden. Yes. And the idea actually came to us from one of our listeners. Yep. We do listen to you guys, see? Then we're the listeners. Catherine from Denver said, I've been trying to rethink how to water my flower beds and yard. As we all look long-term drought in the face, any thoughts upside-down tulips want to share with us? Let's do it. Let, let's let's talk about this. Um, well, it's huge. Well, you know, Edith, there are so many trees and lawns in the Denver metro area. It's easy to forget that actually we live in the high desert plains. Yes, yes it is. And water is becoming more short in supply. Mm-hmm. It's costing more money. Climate change has caused more frequent, more severe droughts. So it's critical that the backyard gardener take a look about how they're using their water. I agree. And I think gardeners um, are the kind of people, they don't garden so they can waste things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I've always thought, okay, how can I, how can I make my water go the furthest? So this is great. Well, you know, most garden plants like about an inch of moisture per week. Mm -hmm. And if you're growing a vegetable garden, if you're growing food or crops, they need about one to two inches of water per week. And Last week in Denver, we lost an inch of water due to evaporation because of the heat. Yeah. So that means in our neck of the woods, we need to be thinking about adding two to three inches of water per week. Now, if you're not, like, I don't really do this math in my head very well, um, but I, if I go out and I'm going to water, and I always water low, I, and if the soil is wet or moist, I don't water. Yeah. Right? You it's about looking and paying yeah. attention. That's right. That's right. Don't That's make like, it a habit. Make it a point of paying attention. You may have to stick your finger in it. <laughs> I do stick. I, I like up to do things. Up to the things. second knuckle. Yes. If you stick your finger in it up to your second knuckle and if it feels wet, or like I say, if it looks like wet brownie batter, don't water it. If it looks uh-huh. like dry ba- uh-huh. brownie batter. Good. Uh-huh. One great, another great way to save water is when you water. You mean the time of day? Yes. Yes. Um, not Never, ever, ever, ever water in the heat of the day. It'll just evaporate. Yeah. You You're waste so it. much water. The best time is in the early morning mm-hmm. when it's still cool, which will allow the water to run into the soil and reach the roots of the plant without too much excess water being lost to evaporation. Yes. However... If you are um, a vampire, I'm a, I am, or I Edith, am. or me, <laughs> or you're somebody who works all day, there you, you know, go, right? And you come home, then of course, early evening mm-hmm. is fine. It's also. just fine. Try not to do it late, late at night, and try not to get the leaves wet because that could, if, if they're wet and going into the night, that does that can cause yeah. fungus. That's why I say I water low. You say like water the toes. I say water low. Water the toes and never the nose. Mm -hmm. If you water from too high, also half the moisture is lost to evaporation. So you want to direct the water at the base of the plant. Mm -hmm. Avoid wetting the foliage, which invites fungus and bugs. Um, You should also try to water infrequently and deeply, not frequently and lightly. Yes. This is, and that's why you actually can touch the soil to, to see if it really needs it. Yeah. If you water your, just like 10 minutes every day, you're not encouraging good root structure. Right. Because the roots should go, the roots won't go down if the water is only in the first inch or two of soil. The roots are not going to mm-hmm. go get stronger. You want to train them to go down. Yes. You want to train them. them. And the longer the roots are, then the more... Therefore, you can actually go in between waterings. Now, last year I was watering, I watered, I was watering every day. And I'm not doing it this year. I'm doing every uh, every other day depending. Uh-huh. Because uh-huh. you also have to keep, an, you have to c- calculate for rain. Yes. But rains, 
turn off your sprinklers, friends. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but also, also, Christy, you know, um, it also depends on like how well mulched you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we can get into other things, but uh, yeah, this is why we say pay attention. Okay. If you don't know how much water you're putting down, a great trick if you're using a sprinkler, which I have a sprinkler. I don't have a sprinkler system, but uh-huh. if you, I think this even works if you have a sprinkler system, but I just have an old-fashioned sprinkler that goes back and forth. For your lawn? Yeah. Or for your garden? For my lawn. For your lawn, uh-huh. You can put out little um, coffee cans or water gauges or tuna cans or cat food cans, and as you're sprinkling for 15 minutes, go out and measure how much water is in there. Oh, that's and if you, nice. And if you were out there for 15 minutes and you got a quarter of an inch of water, that means that, you know, in that area you do 30 minutes you'll get a half an inch of water in 30 minutes. So you know how much you're putting, how much water you're putting out. Mm -hmm, Now, mm -hmm. I have a soaker hose in the vegetable garden. And if you have a soaker hose, that typically will put down, depending upon your water pressure, one inch of water in 200 minutes of time. 200 minutes, that's over three hours, right? Right. So, but if you, but if you want to spread it but out. it's nice because it goes in a little bit and gives the roots time to suck yeah. it up. There's no runoff, right? There's, oh, it's, you know, soaker hoses are such a great way to save water. They'll save you a lot on your water bill. Um, but you could d- divvy that up throughout the week, you know. So uh-huh. if you're just going to water three or four times a week, then you just know you can go, you know, 60 minutes at a time or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else we want to say about the best practices, or should we talk about how I collect water? Um, I I am thinking about best practices, thinking, 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 and I got nothing. I think we've covered it. <laughs> okay. I think we've covered okay. it. So, uh, one of the great ways to collect water is with a rain barrel. Yeah, which in Colorado. Up until just a couple of years ago, it was illegal to have. This was considered not our water. It was it belonged That's to the Colorado right. River That's that went right. all the way down to um, our neighbors in Arizona and Nevada. Which and yeah, which California. I can see their point, but it's kind of silly because if we don't use that water, we'll be using the city water. So, really, yeah, six of one, half a dozen yeah. of the other. Well, one of my one of my mistakes for this year is that my handsome and handy husband got me a great birthday gift this year. He got me a rain barrel. And where is it, Christy? I've not seen it out there. Well, it's there. Is it? Yeah, it's Are you there. using it? It's just not hooked up yet with the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, what I did, I don't have a rain barrel, but I have, I have all those storage bins that I'm not using. So I moved my gutter so it goes right into the storage bin. Now, this is a little labor intensive, but when one of the bins is full, I get a bucket and I put it into another bin. So I get as absolute much water as possible. The only drawback to that, since they're open, is that mosquitoes will lay eggs. That's not good. if you stir the water, you kill the eggs. That's what I read. I had that too, which is that, and this is from growing up in Minnesota, Stagnant water. Oh, Minnesota's all about mosquitoes, right? Yeah, to Atlanta, 10,000 lakes. And a billion mosquitoes. Yeah. That, that, that's why they both start with the letter M. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I moved out here to Colorado, and I saw this little teeny tiny little gnat. And I went to some, I said, what is that? And I go, oh, that's a mosquito. And I went, that little thing? You mean yours are bigger in Minnesota? I've never been to Minnesota. Yeah, you could ride them like a horse. <laughs> okay, so so big, <laughs> so big, so big. Hey, let's do some more. Ask Agnes. Oh, good. Hi, everybody. It's Ask Agnes, and I'm back. I'm calling Lindsay back because we got disconnected. I have a fun way to teach her about hybrid tomatoes. Hello. Lindsay, it's Agnes from Ask Agnes. Aren't I supposed to call you? Well, since you seemed a little sad, and who wouldn't be putting all that work into the garden and not even getting one tomato year after year? It is sad. I'm sad. Well, this will cheer you up. I've made a little presentation for you with some of my drama students at the community college, and all you have to do is listen, all right? I hate drama. And curtain! (laughs) 
Welcome to my tomato town, where everyone's a hybrid tomato. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? That's Juliet, a delicious red cherry hybrid tomato, weighing in at just one ounce apiece. Look at me. Everybody, look at me. And here's a celebrity tomato. Fruits weigh about eight ounces. No, I don't weigh that much. This tomato cage makes me look bigger. Hey, I'm a big boy. You sure are. Big boys are great tomatoes for slicing. I'm a big boy. So big. Hello. Welcome to Tomato Town. Can I get you anything? And this, of course, is the super sweet, full of sugary flavor, sometimes called the candy of tomatoes. Thank you for talking about me. That's so nice. Don't come any closer to me. Wait a minute. You're a Moscovich tomato, a Russian heirloom. I only planted hybrids in my tomato town. How did you get in here? I go where I want. So if I want to go to the Ukraine or to the Crimea or your little tomato town, I go. Who's going to stop me? Not me. I enjoy volunteers. And end scene. Oh, great job, drama class. Lindsay, I hope you enjoyed that. Strangely enough, I did. And I had no idea there were so many hybrids. And thank you, Agnes, for wanting to cheer me up. That was nice. Oh my gosh, I, I sound like a super sweet tomato, which I will grow next year. Oh, good. Another garden saved. Till next time, goodbye, everyone. Class dismissed. We're back. I'm trying to be as enthusiastic as Agnes. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Agnes. <laughs> oh, Agnes. So, everybody, we're talking water. You know, I have been, we have never had a lot of water out here in Colorado. So, I've been, for many, many years, I've been collecting the gray water, which is, I don't have a, what, what, uh, uh, what do you call it, when you wash, a dishwashing machine. <laughs> No, it's called a dishwasher. Yeah, very good. Right? Yes. Is that what it is? That's what the kids are calling it these days. <laughs> <laughs> they don't put the word machine on it. Do they? <laughs> well, whatever. What, whatever. Okay, okay. So I wash the dishes in a sink, and then I have a bin where I rinse them. When that gets full, then I empty that into a bucket, and then I just walk it to the port. I've been doing that for years and years and years. If there's a really bad drought, I will collect water from the shower. All of that is perfectly fine. That's you just the put a bucket in the shower. Or put a bucket in the shower, um, or both. You could do anything you wanted. Um, so I do that. You know, some people will take have, have a way of reusing their, dish, their washing machine water, their laundry water. Really? Yeah, there's a way that you can hook things up. And I think you have to change the way you, which kind of soap you use. It should be a yeah. It can't be a harsh, harsh uh, soap, right? But, but when you think about it, that yeah, there are ways that people will just have a way for it just to go right out to the yard. You know, you have um, to be handy. I think. Yeah, I'm not handy at all. Uh, I th this reminds me that one time when I was visiting my aunt in Germany, she had in her kitchen her kitchen window. She could open it and the screen, and when she had water, she had a little gutter there. And she just emptied the water. Oh, I love that. Straight into the gutter. Oh, I love that. Which went straight into the garden. Gravity. Yeah. She never wasted an ounce of water. Cooking water, gray water, all that water. The only water you don't want to use is what's called black water. And that water is toilet water. Basically, if that's the uh, feces had something to do with that water. So it's. That's why they call it black water. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you seen those toilets in Europe, Edith, where you the the sink is actually next to the toilet and you when you wash your hands, yes. the water instead of just going out goes into the toilet. Christy, tank. do you know who has one here in Denver? The Boulder. Mercury the Mercury Cafe. Oh, oh. The Mercury, the Mercury, that's what they do. I was also going to say Boulder. Well, it's such a Boulder thing. It's such a Boulder <laughs> thing, but it's the Mercury, it's, you know, a Marilyn Magenity thing as well. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the kind of, uh, that's great. It's, it's so fantastic. So folks, think about how you can collect 
some gray water, but not black water. Not black water. And reuse it in your garden. Yeah. You know, it's great for containers. I'll do that. You know, yes. Just grab it and throw it in your containers. It's and really great. yeah, and if and if you get it from your kitchen, like if you have, think of all the vitamins you're throwing away. If you, for example, bo- uh, cook spinach or yeah. any vegetable, don't throw that water mm-hmm. away. Think about the water that you're using to warm up. So if you're trying to warm up water, oh my gosh, that's right. My water takes forever to warm up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good thinking, Christy. And then you can just go and. Put it in your containers if they're like, you don't have to go that far. Or you can even do your house plants. House plants are great. Yeah. Just do something that's, don't have to, you don't have to go crazy. No. You don't have to go like, okay, I got to empty out my whole bathtub after you take a tub. Okay, I've done that, but okay. But do something, start with something small. Start with something small that. That, it, that works like for you. Like a thimble full. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to make it be easy for people. That you don't have to make a huge change. You can just make a little and change. And I say challenge yourself. Okay. Come on. Hey, let's talk about soil moist because the it two, has your oh, two favorite two words. words. Okay. Eat it. You love the word moist. You love the word soil. Soil moist. If you folks have ever seen this or tried this, this is a, it's called a hydrogel. And so they're small chunks or crystals of human-made water-absorbing polymers. So that these little things are like sponges, and they hold a tremendous amount of water in comparison to their size, like 300, 400 times their size. And then the water is gradually released into the soil. So that sounds really great. Mm-hmm. And there are various types of it. They're used in a lot of products, like they're in bandages, they're in wound dressings. Um, for burns, they're also um, what make diapers so absorbent. Oh, my gosh. Hydrogels. Um, Why don't we just use a diaper? <laughs> just put a diaper. <laughs> because it depends. <laughs> I walked right into that fun. Um, well, some people don't know if it really helps or not. Um, the answer is kind of maybe. Yeah. Um, manufacturers, of course, will claim that the crystals hold all this stuff and they conserve water by releasing it. But the University of Arizona had a report that the crystals aren't always effective and may actually interfere with the water holding capability of the soil. So the reality is probably somewhere in the yeah. middle. Yeah. And I think what they would be really good in are containers. I was just thinking that. I think I read this article where if you go away on vacation and you put some of those polymers on the Mm -hmm. top of a plant, not on the plant, but on the soil and water it, the polymers will hold the water and release it as needed. Is that correct? Yes. Look at me. I'm a scientist. So, you know, don't expect them to be a miracle solution for extended periods or to put them in your soil. You know, some experts are saying the polymers are neurotoxins, and they may even be carcinogenic. What? So it's a common belief that water crystals aren't environmentally safe because the chemicals leach into the soil. You know, like I say, Edith, it depends. Oh, Christy, <laughs> so. I, I, I always will go, if there's a question, I just won't use it. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. just won't use it. So. Yeah. Well, and you. because if you don't just say, well, now what do I do? There are a couple things, though, that you can do to improve your soil without sure. using these polymers. And the best thing, of course, is compost. Add organic matter. The yeah. more you do that, the more you improve the soil's ability to retain moisture. Yes, so absolutely. Throw compost on. And, of course, we can never say it enough. You've already mentioned it, mulch. but when in doubt, mulch, 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 because that will um, reduce water use. It also prevents weeds, and weeds take up a lot of water. Which is a really good reason to take out plants that you know are not going to do anything. Exactly, to waste of water. A really good reason to weed. You know, Christy, And deadhead, too. And deadhead. Because those those plants that, um, they need more water when they're going to seed. Oh, because they're producing more. Yeah, I get that. You know what I did this year that worked is I planted, I put a whole plot under my peach tree and I put a plot of things that like peas, lettuce, spinach, Mm -hmm. things that are, don't love the hot, hot weather. You know what? That worked. Anytime folks, you can create some kind of shade. So I plant sunflowers in my vegetable garden to create shade. Um, I put a lawn chair over my arugula 
to create shade. Um, if you have an umbrella, if you have shade cloths, mm -hmm. that will also reduce how much water you use. Another thing you can do is how you choose your plants. The the ones that don't need a lot of water, for example, I looked around. I have Russian sage, echinacea, yarrow, lamb's ear, vinca, daylily, sedum. None of those need a lot of water. In fact, I like almost never water those in a certain place. They're called xeriscapic. Yes, because they, they don't need, need little them. water. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, look for native plants, friends. So if you use drought tolerant or native plants, they will create a low water use, low maintenance landscape for yourself. That's right, because they're meant to be mm -hmm. here. So they've already yeah. adapted. Whoops. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> You're excited there, Edith. <laughs> I'm adapting to my space, folks. I just, okay. Um, and if you plant plants according to their water needs together. Uh -huh. It's called hydrozone. Mm -hmm. So if you hydrozone your yard so that low water use or moderate water use or high water use is all grouped together, then you'll know how to water things That's really more smart. effectively. That's really smart. Mm -hmm. And um, please folks, even though you might be tempted, do not grow an almond tree out in the West. No, don't do it. Holy goodness. I saw a an article, Edith, that said how much almond trees, how much water they use mm -hmm. compared to everything else. It's kind of crazy. To grow one almond requires 1.1 gallon of water. To grow one almond. Almond. Okay. Wow. Okay. No more almond joys for me. I'm going mounds. <laughs> that is all <laughs> there is to that. <laughs> Please do not feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Okay. Um. So what about the lawn? Do we have time to talk about the lawn real yeah, quick? Yeah, let's talk about the lawn. Um, I have a lawn, and there are a lot of great ways to save water when you have a lawn. Number one, aerate your lawn in the spring will help your lawn retain moisture mm -hmm. because it's creating good root structure for your lawn. Mm -hmm. uh, set your mower higher. So leave at least three inches of grass or three and a half if you have a fescue lawn. The added height uh, will slow evaporation. It actually creates shade. Um, I have, I've had neighbors on this block where I've, the gardener has come in and I told my neighbor, don't let them mow it too short. And they come in and they just, oh, they just do as yeah. short as they can. Yeah. And guess what? The grass dies. Yeah. Wow. Or it goes into hibernation, right? Yeah. It usually comes back once it rains, but it, yeah. or not. Or not, yeah. Uh, take the clipping bag off your mower and allow the grass to settle in on the yard. Uh, these clippings are a kind of mulch that will also hold in soil moisture. Careful of when you, how much you fertilize. Fertilize, you know, maybe once in the they fall. They need so and much more water. When you fertilize something, mm -hmm. it needs so much more yeah. water. Yeah, not a great idea. And as we said before about the garden, it's better to water your lawn deeper, but fewer times than to water it for just a few minutes every day. Yeah. Watering it just a little bit causes the water to stay on top of the soil, mm -hmm. and that encourages a shallow root system. Um, you can also reduce the size of your lawn, which you is what do I that. do. Mm -hmm. I scoop away little chunks of it every year and turn it into more garden. Mm -hmm. um, and you could also consider there are some low water turf types available. You well, can check to see what's good in your area. Very good. Very good. Everything we can do to help save this precious commodity. As she drinks some water. Put that down. You Put that down. You don't really need that. You really need that water. <laughs> TikTok, Christy, what time is it? It's mailbag time, Edith. Ring, ring. This letter is from Anne from Pennsylvania. And she titles it, Spousal Ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> I love people that title their letters. Yeah, I love that too. Is it really so difficult to distinguish a weed from a not weed? Yes, maybe when things are very new and small, or when the person weeding is neither patient nor observant. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. When my husband and I were newly married and had purchased our first house, we decided to plant a large truck patch in the area of the backyard that had clearly once been a garden but was overgrown with thistles, nettles, and ladies' thumb. It took years before we finally got most of the thistles out of there, so weeding was of vital importance. 
Yeah, thistles. We had another letter about thistles, too. They're terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She goes on. What I hadn't realized, though, was that my beloved's idea of weeding was basically tearing every green thing out of the dirt unless the green thing was at least three inches tall. Oh, no. Weeds yeah. often grow more rapidly than veggies, hence my error in asking him to help weed the bean rows. When the beans were just sprouting, but the plantain and galensoga... What's galensoga? I don't know. Okay, Anne, write us another letter that says subject matter, Golensoga. So anyway, she says, when the beans were just... Podcast host ignorance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't, don't title your letter that, okay? okay. <laughs> when the beans were just sprouting, but the plantain and the Golensoga were already quite well established, you can guess the outcome, right? Yes. No beans. No beans. I had to replant the beans. I tried educating my... Help meet as to weed versus not weed, but the only weeds he ever really got good at identifying were pokeweed and thistle. So now the early months of the annual garden are mine to cultivate and cull. When I need help among the perennial beds, I have to supervise. Why can't he tell daylilies from mugwort? I will never know. He's a great help in late autumn, though, when he has license to pull up everything in the vegetable patch. Well, that's handy. That's good. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Anne. No sign off. No. no, no, that's it. She doesn't say anything. Warmly. I don't know. Yeah, she just says that that's a great done. letter. That's a that's a great letter. I like yeah. how she says. I tried educating my help meet. And that's a great word. Have you heard that before? Yes, it's a great word. It's an old fashioned word. Oh, yeah. She's a poet. Nice, Anne. Well, um, it's always good to have somebody to pull everything out at the end of it. And I've been there about weeding. Just be careful about pulling everything up out, men. Yeah. It's not what she meant. <laughs> Okay, folks, well, if you have garden questions, garden stories, if you've ever had anything pulled up by accident in your garden, if you have some good water-wise saving tips, we want to hear from you. Write to us, please, at UpsetOnTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsetOnTulips.com or check out the show notes. It's the time for that music, Edith. Uh-oh. I'm feeling profound. I have a quote. This is from Andrew Weil, who is an alternative medicine guy. He says, My passion for gardening may strike some as selfish or merely an act of resignation in the face of overwhelming problems that beset the world. It is neither. I have found that each garden is just what Voltaire proposed in Candide, a microcosm of a just and beautiful society. Wow. Isn't that great? That's a quote within a quote. Oh my gosh, a play within a play, a quote within a quote. We are out of our own league. We're amazing. <laughs> that is a beautiful quote, Edith. That's going to carry me all week. And folks, we hope it carries you all week too. Thank you so much for being with us today on Upside Down Tulips. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. If you got some laughs and some value out of today's episode, could you do us a favor? You could hit that subscribe, like, or follow button on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hey, thanks so much to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you want to hear more of Denise's music, go to denisegentilini.com or find that link at UpsideDownTulips.com. Thank you to our excellent yet enigmatic engineer who prefers to be shrouded in mystery and will probably cut this, but he better not. And a very special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens. Join us next week for Backyard Battles of Bindweed and Buddies. Brilliant. <laughs> now don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Oh, nice. Upside down to